In today's Medico Apps Masterclass, we will discuss about Circle of Willis. Circle of Willis is also called as Polygon of Willis or Circulosus Arteriosus Cerebri. Essentially, it is a ring of intercorrecting arteries located at the base of the brain. More specifically, it lies in the subarachnoid space within the deep interpedicular cistern. So in the diagram, you can see this and this is a very important MCQ which has been asked often. So it lies in the subarachnoid space within the deep interpedicular cistern. A lot of important structures are out there around this point. It's around the optic chiasm in fundibulum of pituitary stalk and hypothalamus. So all these three critical structures are there where the circle of villus is present. And the most important role is it provides the blood supply. It's an awesome example of collateral circulation in brain. And since these are very, very critical structures, so even if one artery of the circle of villus is blocked, other arteries provide collateral blood circulation to these areas. So the main function of circle of willis is to provide blood supply to brain and neighboring structures where it is present. Let's look at the blood supply of brain in totality. So this is the diagrammatic representation of the blood supply of brain from an inferior view. This is what we have is the circle of willis. But before going into that, let's look at the arteries which comprise of the circle of willis willis from a little below so this is what we have is the vertebral arteries both on both side we have vertebral arteries deriving from the subclavian artery these vertebral artery come out of subclavian artery and run through the foramina of the cervical vertebrae upward and anteriorly before they fuse to form the basilar artery so both these vertebral artery will finally fuse to form a single artery that is the basilar artery before they fuse they give two very very critical branches the first branch is the posterior inferior cerebral artery and the second branch is the anterior spinal artery so you see both the branches finally fuse to form a single anterior spinal artery and once they fuse they are called as the basilar artery these basilar artery will give three very critical branches the first being anterior inferior cerebral artery so after fusion the first branch that the basilar artery will give is the anterior inferior cerebral artery and then these are very critical small branches which are called as the pontine branches which will provide blood supply to a lot of critical structures in that area especially the capsule the internal capsule and finally they will give us superior cerebral artery so these three branches and ultimately terminating into posterior cerebral artery so this is what the basilar artery will do basilar artery will first give the anterior inferior cerebral artery then the pontine branches then the superior cerebral artery and finally the posterior cerebral artery now this is the bad boy the internal carotid artery this internal carotid artery will give a posterior communicating artery so posterior communicating artery is given by the internal carotid artery also anteriorly it will give the anterior cerebral artery and both the anterior cerebral artery will give the branch which will form as the anterior communicating artery so this completes the circle of willis so from posteriorly we have the posterior cerebral artery which is formed from the basilar artery then internal carotid artery will form the three important arteries on posterior side it will form the posterior communicating artery on anterior side it will form the anterior cerebral artery and finally there will be branches from the anterior cerebral artery which will combine and form the anterior communicating artery also internal carotid artery here gives two very critical branches that is the ophthalmic artery and the anterior choroidal artery so this is an overview of the blood supply from the inferior part of the brain As already looked now let's look at just the circle of willis and see the what are the arteries which comprise of the circle of willis so anteriorly we know that they we have the anterior communicating artery which is a branch of anterior cerebral artery which we knew came from internal carotid artery anterior laterally we have anterior cerebral artery which is a direct branch of internal carotid artery posteriorly 
or posterior laterally we have the posterior communicating artery which again is a branch of internal carotid artery and posteriorly we have the posterior cerebral artery which is a branch of basilar artery which was derived by the fusion of both the vertebral arteries now here important part is internal carotid artery forms 80 percent of the circulation of the circle of willis whereas basilar artery or more specifically posterior cerebral artery forms around 20 percent of the circulation responsible in the circle of willis Let's look at the clinical significance of circle of villus. Circle of villus provides collateral circulation and blood supply to very, very critical structures which are present around there. As already told, pituitary, hypothalamus, optic chiasm. So these very critical structures will keep on getting blood supply even if there is a unilateral or bilateral carotid artery block. And there can be many cases in which there could be a carotid artery block like cerebral infarction, vascular malformation, hemorrhage, tumor, inflammatory vessel disease. One of the most important questions asked around this is on berry or saccular aneurysms. Berry or saccular aneurysms occurs at anywhere where there is a bifurcation of circle of villus. The most common association of belly or saccular aneurysm is with adult polycystic disease. Also, it can be seen in certain connective tissue disorders like Enhardalus syndrome. Most common location is the junction of anterior communicating artery with the anterior cerebral artery. So here you can see almost 40% of berry or saccular aneurysms occur at the junction of anterior communicating artery and anterior cerebral artery. Below is the, uh, is the radiological representation. Also, the most common complication is the rupture or leading to a subarachnoid sub hemorrhage or hemorrhagic stroke. Most common complication of berry or saccular aneurysm is hemorrhage. The rupture generally leads to a subarachnoid hemorrhage and leading to a hemorrhagic stroke. In that cases, vasospasm is the leading cause of morbidity and mortality. Today's brain teaser question is, anterior communicating artery is a branch of internal carotid artery. True or false? If you know the answer of this question, write in the comment below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And once you have subscribed, hit the bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever we upload a new Medico Apps Masterclass. Check out this next Medico Apps Masterclass, which you may find very helpful.